bring our Brendan Kirby back in now. We were talking about how now the testimony for the defense and prosecution, they've rested their case, and he's got the latest on the trial of Marco Perez. Yeah, Lenny, it says I was saying defense attorney Dennis Nisley seized on any, or any conflicting statement he could find of a key witness to that event. Jurors in a Mobile County Capitol murder trial on Monday heard from the final witnesses in the case, including Chris Wildebrandt, who was living at the Peach Place Inn Apartments off of Leroy Stevens Road on January 20th, 2019. Wildebrandt testified that he heard a gunshot, went to his balcony, and saw defendant Marco Perez standing over Mobile Police Officer Sean Tudor and then firing two more times before running toward the woods. Defense Attorney Dennis Nisley, on cross-examination, pressed Wildebrandt about prior conflicting statements that he's made. That's standard operating procedure for defense lawyers cross-examining a witness, but in this case, Nisley had an unusually large amount of material to work with. Wildebrandt gave one statement to police at the scene and another at Mobile Police Headquarters. He also testified at Perez's federal trial and at his Stand Your Ground hearing in state court. Finally, he recently gave a videotaped deposition when it looked like he might not be able to appear in person at the trial. That's five previous occasions in which he's given slightly different accounts. The defense seized on those different details, such as how many shots he heard, whether he saw Officer Tudor before or after the first gunshot, whether Perez was wearing a red hat, and whether he told the man who dialed 911 that a police officer had been shot. At one point, Nisley had co-counsel Jason Darley lie on the floor while he used a stick and a toy gun to reenact the scene, having Wilderbrandt show where Perez and Tudor were. After the jury was out of the room, Mobile County Circuit Judge Ben Brooks admonished Perez not to chuckle. Nisley says his client was reacting to Darley's facial expression and meant no disrespect. The judge says that he didn't find anything funny about the situation. The final witness was Patricia Lindley, a firearms analyst with the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences. She testified that bullets from Officer Tudor were a match for the 40 caliber Smith & Wesson gun that prosecutors say Perez fired. To find Perez guilty of capital murder, prosecutors must prove that he killed Tudor intentionally and that Officer Tudor was performing a law enforcement act and or that he was on duty. Judge Brooks this afternoon said that he will instruct jurors that they will have two less serious alternatives to consider if they don't believe the state has met its burden for capital murder. Those are non-capital murder, which carries a possible sentence of 20 years to life in prison, and reckless manslaughter, which carries a possible penalty of 10 to 20 years in prison. Reporting live from the News Center, Brendan Kirby, Fox 10 News.